Have you ever wondered what people who live in organized, calm homes do differently? Today I'm sharing five new decluttering rules to help you get your home decluttered and organized. These rules are based on popular decluttering methods and anyone, I mean anyone, can do them. And the best part is, none of these take longer than 15 minutes at a time. Clutter is a huge problem for many of us. Did you know that the average American spends 2.5 days a year looking for lost items, and kind of even more shocking, so I had to put this in the video, 20% of people who have items in storage live in a four bedroom home or larger. I'm Taryn and I make content to enhance your home and simplify your life, so let's get started. So the first rule is to declutter little and declutter often. I don't know about you, but I don't feel like spending my entire day decluttering. Not only do I not have the time to do it, I just don't want to do that. But guess what? I have tackled so many home decluttering projects and made huge dents in them in only 15 minute increments. Last week, I organized my pots and pans. It took maybe 10 minutes. I decluttered my attic, which we're sitting in right now. This attic has like 25 years of stuff and I managed to declutter probably 65% of it in increments of 15 minutes at a time. Just stop delaying your success by feeling like you need to go all in and do everything at once. The other thing you could do is you could just aim to declutter like one thing a day and just say like, I'm gonna do this for 30 days or maybe 45 days. And then by the end of that time period, you have a ton of stuff to donate. The next rule is to apply KonMari decluttering techniques but only to your everyday clutter. And I say everyday clutter, I'm talking about things like clothing, pots and pans, shoes, kitchen items, things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis and that we use regularly. I'm not talking about like your wedding china or photos you have passed down from your grandparents. I find some of the KonMari techniques just the best for your everyday clutter. I'm gonna give you three that I think you can implement today. The KonMari method recommends that you begin with clothing. The reason this works so well is because clothing is one of those things that I think everybody has too much of. Unless you're a minimalist or maybe you're actively trying to keep your closet under control, just everybody has too much of it. So by starting with clothing first, it kind of gives you a quick win and you feel motivated and you wanna keep on going. And it makes a really big impact as well. I decluttered my closet, my master bedroom closet, I've been feeling great, and this was like six months ago, I'm still feeling great. It really does make a big impact. For your clothing, Marie Kondo does recommend that you take everything out of your closet and you pile it up on your bed so that you can see it. The reason she says to do this is because it's kind of for like shock value so that you kind of get shocked into seeing how much clothing you own. I say don't even bother to do this, however. I just, I think this sounds exhausting. My tip here is instead when you're when you're decluttering your clothing, just keep it all in your closet, but declutter by section and, and just kind of do a section at a time. You don't wanna pull out your whole closet and have to start all over. You could do that if you think it would be useful, but I find that just to be very tiring. Marie recommends that when you're decluttering your clothing, you go by category. So, you know, blazers, sweaters, shoes, just do each category one at a time. The second KonMari technique in this, in this rule, and this one I love, and it is to decide if an item sparks joy when you look at it. So, this is something that does not need to just be applied to clothing. This could be applied to every single thing that you're trying to declutter. So if you look at an item and you don't immediately feel like, I love this, I have joy for it, I use it, and if you don't use it, you can make a quick decision to declutter that item. You don't need to think too much. By using the sparking joy technique, I think it makes decluttering a little bit more enjoyable because in this instance, you're actually choosing what to keep rather than trying to choose what to get rid of. This third KonMari technique, I find it to be life-changing and it is to store like items with like items. So you kind of think about this, you store your glassware with all of your glassware, you store all of your baking items together, you store all of your shoes together, keep all of your hair care together. By doing this, you will really transform how your home is organized and you will make it into something that is much more functional so that you're not looking for a pair of shoes in three different places. And once you start organizing like items with like items, you're honestly gonna wonder how you managed it before. KonMari is really about simplicity. So I think when you apply her techniques, you really bring a functional, simplistic organization style, and it really helps when you're trying to declutter and get your home organized. If you're liking this kind of content, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button down below. It is free and I make videos twice a week. The next rule, and, and maybe this could have been first, but it's to write down your why. 
why are you doing this decluttering? Maybe it's to feel less stressed and happier. Maybe it's to be a good role model for your children. Or maybe you just want people to be able to come over and you don't feel like you have to do a ton of work to get the house in order before they can come in. There's so many whys and they're really like personal to, our, to us. And so I say just take a minute, write them down. And the reason why this is so important and why I'm putting this as a rule is because I find that motivation kind of ebbs and flows. Some days you're really motivated to get the decluttering going, whereas other, other days maybe you don't care as much and you aren't as motivated. But the thing is, because we're going to be decluttering and making an impact, we kind of wanna be doing it every day until we're done. So if you've got your why written down and ready and you're thinking about it, and that will motivate you to keep on going every day because remember rule number one, declutter little and declutter often. Now, Thanksgiving is coming up and so I am using that as my why. It's like a short-term thing, but I've got family who will be staying with me and then even more family who will be coming to have dinner with us. And so I'm using that as motivation to get my house in order. I've got a few weeks and I'm gonna get things done. There's kind of a few things packed into this next rule, but inflation is really impacting a lot of us. But on the flip side, not just inflation, we also need to think about sustainability and the impact that our stuff has on the planet. Overconsumption is a huge problem, not just here in the US, but globally. I actually saw a stat that the average family of four throws away 6,500 pounds of garbage a year. It is like the size of a rhinoceros that we're throwing away, just one family. But listen, even if you aren't concerned about overconsumption and what happens to your things after you throw them away, do you really wanna be decluttering for the rest of your life? Do you want decluttering to be a lifestyle? Because that's what's going to happen if you don't think about the things that you're bringing into your home and the things that you're buying. So you really need to learn to live with less, live a, li a little bit more simply, and, and really be mindful of what you're bringing into the home. Because again, you have gotta stop that clutter in its tracks before it gets into your home, or, or you will be having to declutter all the time. I'm not saying you need to become a minimalist, but there are some really good principles and I will say having fewer possessions is very freeing. If you wanna get started here, I'm just gonna give you a few suggestions of some things you can do. Number one, I try to limit single use materials. So the way that these can be defined is like anything that you use once and then you throw it away. So think things like water bottles that you throw away or Q-tips or paper towels. Skip fast fashion, I personally, kind of like to have a few trendy items. But the way that I like to do this is I try to dress very classically and then each year I will add maybe one or two trendy items to my wardrobe so that I'm not like fully focused on trying to stay trendy, but I'm still looking a little bit trendy. Like even this sweater, for example, I, I bought this sweater over 15 years ago. I still wear it today, but it's just like a classic sweater and I get a lot of use out of it. And then the third thing you can do in this rule is before you buy something, try to think about, do you need it? Are you going to actually use it? And what's gonna happen to it after you throw away? I was actually having this conversation with my kids in the car. I only let them buy ho new Halloween costumes every couple of years. You know, I have three kids and they kind of share their costumes. And this year, they were really like lobbying me to let them buy new costumes for all of them. I just started talking to them about it and I said, well, you know, new costumes are great, but you actually just wear them for one day and then what are you gonna do with them? You're gonna donate them, you're gonna get rid of them, somebody else is gonna wear it for one day and then it's gonna end up in the landfill. I could see them thinking about this and by the end, they actually agreed and they were completely on board with not buying the new costumes. It's not about money and not wanting to spend money on new things. It's just about thinking like, what's gonna happen to these things? Do I really need them? We are in the digital age and because of that, we are faced with so much digital clutter. So my next rule here is to get ahead and a hold of your digital clutter. You may think that digital clutter, whatever, I don't see it in front of my face as much, but the truth is, and they've done research that shows this, digital clutter has as much impact on our anxiety and stress levels as physical clutter. We all have cell phones, right? So I think that's the easiest place to start. So what I'm recommending that you do here is get out your phone, go through your phone, and do a few things. Number one, delete contacts that you no longer contact or you don't talk to anymore. Or if you've got multiples and duplicates, put the contacts together and get rid of those duplicates. The other thing, your photos. Get your photos off your phone, put them into storage. 
I use Amazon Photos. You could do something like that, but they have all kinds of services. If you don't wanna use a service like a cloud service, you could also get a hard drive and put your photos on there. And then the other thing you can do is remove any apps that you don't like. This gives me so much satisfaction. My kids add so many games to my phone and I, I just look at my phone sometimes and I'm like, what is all of this on my homepage? So I just love just delete, 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 delete. You can always re-download them if you accidentally delete them, but don't have them cluttering up your phone. Remember, we're only taking like 15 minutes for all of this stuff. But if you have more time, go on to your computer. If you're one of those people who just like leaves a bunch of tabs open, my husband does this, he'll have like 50 tabs open at one time. Go in and close all of those tabs. Then. Organize your desktop with only the documents and the apps that you use on a regular basis. And then finally, empty your download folder and then go in and empty your recycling bin. While I was researching this video, I went in and looked at my recycling bin. I had more than 2,000 documents in there. So I went in there and emptied it out. One of the places in my home that I find it's hard to stay on top of because people are coming into the house and they're leaving the house is my entryway. And the thing about your entryway is when your entryway looks messy, it just gives you the feeling that your whole house looks messy. So if you have the same problem, I'm gonna link a video. I have 11 tips on how to get your entryway organized, decluttered, and tidy. Click on it and I will see you over there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.